The drag and drop email builder in FunnelKit Automations makes designing your emails super easy. Here's what you need to know to get started. The first thing that we recommend you set up are your global styles. Under FunnelKit Automations, click on emails and then on global styles. Your global styles are the default styling for the elements inside of your emails. We recommend that you set these first so that when you jump in and start designing your emails, your emails look cohesive and like they're from your brand. So let's go through these settings now. So the first one is your brand logo. So you'd click here to upload a logo, then you could link it to a page on your website. You could set this to auto width, which makes your logo expand to the width of its container. Next, you can set your brand colors. So you click here, you choose the color or you could enter a hex code here and then click save and there it is. And if you click, you could also remove that if you wanted. Under brand colors, you have your typography settings. So you can set your font family. So these are your email safe fonts, which is sort of your system fonts. And then you have some web fonts that you can use after that. If you choose a web font, you can also choose a backup font here so that if that web font is not on your user's computer, it will revert back to this one when it falls back. Under that, you can set your default font size for your text in your emails, and you can also play around with the font color. You'll notice that when we make changes on the left-hand side, we see a live preview on the right-hand side. Under that, you can set the color of the links inside of your email text. Under that, you can choose your button styling, so the background color, the text color, the font size, and then the width. Auto width just makes the button width the width of the text inside it, but you could disable that and then set it to a custom width. So here it's 100%. After that, you have footer settings, which we'll look at in a second. Under that, you can change the layout of your emails. So the width of the emails when somebody opens it up in their browser, as well as the alignment, you can change the content background color, which if I pull that down is that area there. And then you can also change the entire background color of the emails, which is that area there. Lastly, you have your social links. So you click here and you could select Facebook and link to your Facebook page there and you select another one. Let's do X and we can add that there. Once you're happy, click save. And now as you'll see in just a second, when we design our emails, we'll have that consistent look and feel across all of our emails. Before we design our first email, let's click on footer. And it says that this is a dynamic block and content is coming from form settings. And if we click view details, that takes us to the setting page under funnel kit automations, settings and email down here under footer. This is where you set your default footer text that will be added to the end of each email that funnel kit automation sends. Once you've done those two things, you're ready to design your emails using the visual builder. Let's go into the email builder and show you how it works. It's worth noting that any email that FunnelKit Automation sends can be designed using the Visual Email Builder. That includes all the emails that you send in your automations as well as your broadcasts. For this example today, I'm gonna get into the Email Builder by clicking on Broadcasts and creating a test broadcast. So I'll click Create Email Broadcast. I'll give it a name and click Add. And then I'll click Next. And then down the bottom, I'll click Next. And with Visual Builder selected, I'll click Edit to launch the Visual Builder. There's three different ways you can begin to design your emails. So firstly, you could click to start with a blank email and build it up from scratch. The second way is to click to saved, and this lists all the email templates that you've saved yourself to reuse in the future. Down here, you could click to preview your template, and if you wanna use this, you could click to import template and begin customizing it using the Email Builder. The third option, if we go back to pre-built, is to use one of the pre-made designs that comes with FunnelKit Automations. So here you could click to preview this. On the left-hand side, you could browse to another template. And when you find one you like, you could click to import this template and also have your global styles applied to that template. To learn more about how to use our pre-built designs, as well as how to create and manage your own email templates, see our separate video titled Email Templating. But for now, I'm gonna click start from blank and that's gonna open up the email builder with a blank page for us to get going. Let's cover the fundamentals of using the visual builder. On the left hand side, we have our structure, which are our rows and our columns. We have our blocks that will drag into those columns and then we have our layouts. Layouts are your predefined sections that make up your emails. So with pre-built selected, we're seeing all the pre-built layouts that comes with FunnelKit automations. 
When you find one that you like, you can just drag and drop it into the page like so, and then customize it with your own content. Going back to layouts, if we go up to the top, under saved are all the different layouts that you've created yourself. So let's say you created this and you like this layout, you could click here and then over click the three dots and save this layout to reuse in your future emails. To learn more about this feature, see our separate video titled email templating. Let's go back to structure and start creating our email. So you drag from the left over onto the right. And just like page builders, you have a row and inside your row, you have a section and inside your section, you have columns and you drag your blocks into your columns. So if we wanted to add a block into this column here, we could exit out of editing that column and then click on blocks. And then we could drag a text block over to here and drop it into that column. And then we could begin typing. You'll notice that when you have an element selected on the right hand side, the left hand panel will show its settings. If you click to another element, so if I go from this text block here and click over to there and select a section, now I'm seeing the settings for the section. I can click to exit here and that returns me to my structure blocks and layout view. And then I could begin dragging more blocks over into that column. To delete something, you can just select it. And then up here, you can click the three dots and click delete. And if you want to delete an entire section, you could click to select that section and then press the delete key on your keyboard. Let's say we wanted to add a third column. We could do that easily by clicking on this column and then up here, clicking the three dots and then duplicate. We could select here and then click to delete that column. And we could also delete this column and bring it down to a one column layout. To quickly resize your columns, you can drag from the center of two different columns to resize them. And you can quickly navigate the structure of your emails by clicking on this icon here and we could select the parent section or the parent row. You can move rows around your email by clicking the handle and then dragging and dropping. And the same applies for a section. That also applies for blocks. When you click, you'll see the handle and you can drag into another column. And to change the order of columns, you can click on the parent section. And then over here, you can drag to reorder the columns. If I go ahead and drag a site logo block over and then add a text block, and then under that, add a button block, the default styling of these elements is what we set here under global styles. And speaking of global styles, throughout the interface, if you're not sure if something's using a global style, down here next to a setting, you'll have a globe icon, which if you hover, it'll say the value set from global setting. If we were to adjust the global style and set it to a custom value of 27 pixels, you'll notice that the globe now grays out and has a strike through, letting us know that it's not currently using the global style. But we can click to reset to the global value. So if I select this, it now returns to the global setting of 20 pixels. And you'll see this globe icon indicating global styling around the interface. So if I click to edit the button block and then click to select the text color, down here where I would set that, it's letting me know that the global style is taking effect. If I was to overwrite that, it now grays out, but I can click to return it to its default value. That's the same here for the background color and then also for the text size. If I go back to the background color, under brand colors, we have our three colors here. And these are the colors that we set in our global styles. The blocks you see here are the default blocks that you can use in any email that you build. And the ones that we haven't looked at so far are the image block. So if I drag that over, you can click to select an image from your media library. The divider block to separate sections. Next is a menu block to link out to different pages on your website. A social block, which links out to your social networks. You could add custom HTML and then the footer block outputs the text that we set in global styles under the footer section when we click this link. And I nearly missed the list block, which allows you to list items down your page. Under your general blocks, you have WooCommerce blocks. You could add a product block, which allows you to link to specific products from your WooCommerce product catalog. You could change their layout from a column to a row. You would choose how many products show here. And instead of showing specific products here, you could click to select a product feed. For example, related products, products from a specific product category or categories. You could select your best selling products and you could also do your latest products. And you can also choose what elements of your products are output here in the email. You're also going to love the coupon block. 
which allows you to select a coupon code from your WooCommerce store and it automatically outputs the code here. So these are the default blocks that you have access to when you design all of your emails. But when you're designing specific types of emails, you'll see extra blocks here in the interface. Let me show you what I mean. If we exit out of the builder here and I go into an automation and I click into my abandoned cart automation, because FunnelKit knows that this automation is triggered when a cart is abandoned, when I click to design my emails and go to the visual builder and click edit, and then start from blank. The blocks that I see here are appropriate to designing emails related to somebody abandoning their cart. So if somebody abandons their cart, I wanna show them the items that were in their cart. I also want to give them a link to go back to checkout and purchase the items in their cart. And maybe I wanna incentivize them with a coupon code to get them over the edge and purchasing. To see a list of all the blocks available for building your emails, go to emails and then templates and click to create a template. I'll give this a name and click add. And then if we click to launch the visual builder and then start from blank, we see a list of the general blocks that we saw before, but we see a lot more WooCommerce blocks here. That's because when you're designing an email template, you could be designing an email for a lot of different use cases. You might be doing an abandoned cart recovery email, so you need the cart items and the cart link. Maybe you're doing an order receipt template, so you need the order summary and the customer's address block, and so on. And that's all you need to know to get started with the email builder. If you're an existing FunnelKit user, jump in, give it a go, and if you get stuck, reach out to our support. If you're not currently using the powerful features in FunnelKit automations, then head on over to our pricing page. And if you have a question, reach out to our pre-sales team. We're happy to help.